This is the Sin Pro Air wireless gaming headset from Rocket. I feel like these guys have been on some kind of rampage of epic product releases lately. They've got their Magma and Pyro gaming keyboards and also the Cone Pro Air wireless gaming mice. I reviewed all those things and came away super impressed. And by the way, if you haven't seen those videos, I will link them for you down in the description. Let's start out with the build quality. These things are completely plastic all the way around, but you know what? That's not a bad thing when it comes to this headset. It is built very strong and solid. Like it feels like a really high quality design and it's just well made. I feel confident. I don't think it's gonna break if I drop it on the floor, which is really nice to see. And at the same time, it's got some serious flexibility built into it. Like I can bend the heck out of it, like you can see here. And again, there's no creaking, doesn't feel like it's gonna break. Ear cups are firmly attached. So really no issues whatsoever with the build quality. I think they did an outstanding job and they also kept the weight around 310, 312 grams, which is not like ultra lightweight. It's not the lightest headset out there by any means, but for a wireless headset, it is still on the lightweight side. And it's a nice comfortable weight. It doesn't feel like overwhelming if you're wearing it for a long period of time or anything like that. I thought the weight and the build quality were pretty much top notch when it comes to this headset. Ear cups can slide away from the headband to add a little bit of adjustability so that you can accommodate if you've got like a really big head like me or if you're wearing a hat or something like that. And also there's a lot of tilt and swivel motion and I really like to see that because it can help with comfort and fit um, a lot actually. It makes a really big difference compared to just rigid earphones that don't really move. They finished off the ear cups with some fabric material so you don't have to worry about any of that fake leather stuff that I personally can't stand because it gets hot and sweaty and sticky. They gave us a nice fabric and it's the same all the way around even on the inside so it doesn't transition to a different type of material inside there. It does block out noise pretty well but the one thing I noticed about this that is kind of weird is it's a little bit on the rough side. I don't know why you would use a material like this for a contact surface that's gonna sit against your skin. I mean, it's not like sandpaper or anything like that. It's not gonna like take your skin off, but at the same time, um, it's definitely not the smoothest fabric that I've seen on a headset. I've got a pair of Sennheiser headphones sitting behind me right here on my desk, and that's just so soft, the contact surface on there. It's almost like a suede material or something. This by comparison is noticeably rougher. So when it's on up against your face, you, you can feel it but once you get going in gaming you kind of forget about it and it's not really a big deal. For some reason they went with non-removable ear pads on this headset and for the life of me I can't figure out why you would do that especially on a headset that costs $150. Gaming headsets tend to see a lot of use and they get sweaty and gross over time. Like you've gotta be able to take those ear pads off and clean them. And what about if something happens to it? You get a tear in it or over time it wears out. You can't just go online and buy new replacement ones for this because you can't get these ones off. At least that's as far as I've been able to tell. I tried to twist them, pull on them, peel them off. I can't get these things to budge at all. So you're stuck with what you get. We've got control wheels for the volume and microphone side tone right on the ear cup, so that's nice and easily accessible. And then there's the power button and a USB-C charging port. Sounds being pumped through these things by 50 millimeter nano clear drivers by Turtle Beach, and they've got a frequency response of 12 to 20,000. Right out of the box when I put them on, they sounded pretty much in line with every other digital headset or wireless headset where they're okay, but really nothing crazy right out of the box. They always require some kind of configuration or fine tuning with software to really get them sounding the best that they can. And with the SynPro Air, they've introduced a brand new software application called Neon. So these don't actually work with Swarm, which I didn't realize. I probably should have did my research before I started reviewing them, but I expected them to pop up in Swarm, which I already have installed on my computer behind me and they just weren't connecting. And then I soon after realized it's because you have to download Neon, which I've done and we're gonna take a look at right now. Here's what it looks like, and to get into it, all you gotta do is click on the little picture of the headphones. And this is still beta software, but it looks like they've got most of the stuff that you would have found in Swarm over here already. So you've got superhuman hearing that brings out the high notes so that you can hear footsteps and stuff like that when you're in game. We've got 3D audio, game spatializer, a channel mixer, game dialogue level, noise gate threshold, and of course your main master volume and microphone controls right here. Oh, there's also a battery status indicator here, which comes in handy, obviously. And they did give us the equal equalizer, which I think is really important because it lets you really dial in and fine tune those settings to get the headset sounding as good as it possibly can. 
With a combination of having that 3D audio enabled and also messing around with the EQ settings, I found that I was able to get these things sounding pretty good. To test out the gaming performance, I played some old school Unreal Tournament 2004. I know that game's ancient, but it's a really good game to test out headsets because there's a lot of really subtle and faint audio cues that you need to hear to be able to fight your enemy properly. And with these things tuned, once I got everything going, like I just mentioned before, with the EQ and all that, I was able to hear everything. I I could hear footsteps when they were in water. I could tell where it was coming from on the map. I could hear weapon reloads, um, lifts, jump pads, all that sort of stuff, all those really subtle sounds. You can hear that with this headset. So in other words, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do as a gaming headset. The microphone on here is detachable, which is nice, so you can get it out of the way if you don't need it. And to get it installed, there's a little plastic cap that you have to remove on the left ear cup, and the microphone itself is notched, so it only goes in one way. And then once you've got it installed, it fully supports tilt to mute, which is awesome. Just flip it up and then you're muted. And it's got this nice tactile feedback as you move it, so you can tell when you're activating and deactivating it. And it also plays an audio cue, so you can also hear when it's activating and deactivating. This is what the microphone sounds like on the Rocket Sin Pro Air wireless gaming headset. This audio is being recorded onto my desktop computer that you can see behind me over here. And I actually think it sounds pretty good. It's nice and clear. I can hear details and there's no noticeable distortion or background noise or hissing sounds or anything like that. Um, you know, you got to keep in mind, this is a wireless gaming headset. So there's, first of all, bandwidth limitations. It's got to take the data that it's picking up and send it over to the computer wirelessly. So there's that. And also the fact that, I mean, it's designed to be a gaming headset for in-game communications, not a studio quality microphone. And a lot of people get the two mixed up. This is not for studio quality recordings. If that's what you're after, you want a standalone microphone that's a lot more expensive and designed specifically for that. So keep your expectations in check. And you know what? I think this is actually perfectly good quality for a gaming headset microphone. They've got some really nice looking RGB on here. It's similar to what they've got on some of their newer gaming mice, like the Burst Pro and the Cone Pro Air. It's a honeycomb design, but it only kind of comes through one part. And it's got this diffusion material over it that softens and kind of spreads out the light evenly. It makes a really nice looking lighting effect. And it's one of my favorite look at RGB systems on the market actually and it's all configurable through that neon software so if you jump in there there's a lighting tab you can make some changes to the lighting turn it off if you want to and it does support their AMO intelligent lighting if you just want to set it to that and let it do its own thing. Overall, the lighting, the color scheme, the general design, I think it's a really good looking headset. It's one of my favorite wireless headsets in terms of the aesthetics, but there's one drawback and it's the fact that these ear cups, this material here is like, it really shows fingerprints and smudges. Like you can probably tell just by me holding it up to the camera here, you're gonna be wiping these things constantly if you want them looking clean. Either that or you're just gonna have to deal with a really dirty looking headset all the time. The wireless connectivity on these is Rocket's Stellar wireless technology. There's a little USB dongle that you plug into your computer or your device and they're plug and play and that should be all you really need to do to get them paired up and start working. Now, they're not dual mode wireless, so there's no Bluetooth connection. So that means you're not gonna be able to connect these to your smartphone or your tablet or other device like that. When I'm testing wireless range on a headset, I basically just put them on and walk around my house until I find the point where the signal drops off. And with the Sin Pro Air, the performance was the worst I've ever experienced on a gaming headset. And I just don't understand why, because I've used their Stellar wireless technology before on, I believe it's the Elo Air by Rocket, and it performed much better than this one. Basically with the Sin Pro Air, as soon as I leave my studio space here and go to the next room over, the signal starts getting really choppy and staticky and it's it's basically unusable in my opinion. It sounds really bad. And then as soon as I go down one level to the bottom of the stairs, the signal pretty much cuts out right there. Sometimes it comes in and out for a second, but it basically drops off right there, which is really bad compared to other headsets that I've tested the same way. I started to wonder if there was like some weird interference going on while I was doing the, the range test. So I decided to try out a different headset. I have a Logitech G733 sitting right over there. Also uses 2.4G wireless. I plugged in the receiver, walked around the main floor, walked around the lower floor and didn't lose connection once. So I honestly have no idea what's going on, but there's an issue with the wireless range on the Sin Pro Air as far as I'm concerned. It's just, it's just not great. Now, 
to be fair, it's, I mean, it's a gaming headset, so ideally you're not getting that far away, but that kind of matters to me because I like to wear my headset not just for gaming. Sometimes I want to listen to music while I'm doing other stuff, and it's nice to have that range. So um, just to be clear, if you're within like 10 to 15 feet and you're in the same room, everything's perfectly fine. Like I didn't have any issues with that. It's not until I leave this room and get a wall in between me or another floor where everything really starts to fall apart. Battery life's rated around 24 hours, which sounds pretty good, and I've been using them off and on for a while and that's probably pretty accurate I would say and what's cool is they've also got a quick charge function where if you plug them in with the USB-C cable that they come with um, they'll do a quick charge for 15 minutes and that'll give you five hours of play time so 15 minutes gets you five hours of charge so you know in a pinch if you forgot to charge your headset before your gaming session 15 more minutes is all you need before you start and you're pretty much good to go. After all my testing with the Sin Pro Air I came away with some pretty mixed feelings. I do think it's a good headset. Like I wanna say that it's a good headset because it does some of the core things that it needs to do really well. It's built like a tank. Like I really think we've got a good build quality here. It looks amazing with the RGB lighting and just the overall design and it sounds good and the microphone's clear. So those are like the core things that it does well and for that reason I would say it is a good headset but it does have some pretty glaring drawbacks that are not minor, depending on how you look at it. Number one, it's $150 and it doesn't have removable ear pads. So you can't clean them when they get dirty and you can't replace them if they get damaged. So I think that's a pretty big oversight on Rocket's part. And I don't know how they left that out of a $150 headset. And then the bigger issue for me is that wireless range. I mean, if you wanna walk around and listen to music with your gaming headset, which I like to do, this one is really not gonna cut it unless you're just gonna stay in your room the whole time and not get too far away. Don't put a wall between you, don't go one or two rooms over, stay as close as you can to that receiver and I guess it's okay, but if you really wanna be able to move around and stuff like that, then this is a problem. So for that reason, it's not the easiest product to recommend. You really gotta be the right user to wanna pick this up and spend $150 on it. Now, if the price comes down or if it goes on sale or something like that, then that might change its value proposition. But as it stands today, as I reviewed it, this particular unit in my hands, I would say, $150 is a little much for what it's offering. And that's unfortunate. It's a rare misstep by Rocket, who has just been releasing stellar products lately. So hopefully they can address some of these issues with some revisions, but you know, it is what it is for right now. Anyways, I will have the purchasing links down in the description for anyone that wants some more information or if you're ready to pick one of these things up. Leave us a comment and tell us what you think about it if you have one of these. I'm curious actually, um, if you have one of these, what the wireless range is like for you. Like, I don't know if I just got a pad copy or what. It just seems weird. The whole thing's got me thrown off a little bit. Anyways, leave a comment, tell us what you think about it and get subscribed for more content because there's a lot more on the way and we'll see ya.